Right, yeah. um, morning, everyone. Um, I'm Andy. Uh, pleased to meet you. Um, so, you know, usually it's a Sunday morning, so we could maybe start with some exercises uh, or perhaps some, some yoga. That's always, uh, always a healthy option. But um, as I'm from Scotland, usually the tradition is uh, this sort of thing too. So. But, um, but yeah, maybe we'll just save the yoga and the, uh, and the beer for later. So, uh, can everyone hear okay? Cool, okay. So, um, uh, my name's Andy. Um, uh, I'm uh, a self employed developer. I work in Aberdeen in, in uh, Scotland. I just work from an office in a house, sort of thing. So, uh, uh, Scotland, uh, well, Scotland's obviously up here. Aberdeen is here. It's dry, it's cold, it's windy. Uh, yeah, they have, uh, what do they have? This is, this is Aberdeen, there's a beach, there's a harbour, and it's cold. <laughs> we've got castles, uh, and we've got beaches, and there's also things like oil rigs and helicopters, and uh, whiskey, and porridge, and shit like that. So, uh, yeah, occasionally, <laughs> try and avoid them. So, uh, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a web developer, I've been... Uh, most, most, you know, I've been a web developer really you know, since I've been writing code since uh, maybe 25 years, I guess, and probably three quarters of that's probably been, you know, web-based stuff, a bit of embedded and, and uh, Linux driver code to, uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, PHP, CSS, all these good things, and of course, Dream. Uh, yeah, also, I'm not really, uh, they say about like <laughs> putting yourself out of your comfort zone and stuff, but... I'm not really a talker like this, so I'm absolutely terrified. Uh, that's okay. And what else? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, other things you don't put on slides. I don't know. So I'm a dyslexic, uh, atheist, feminist, uh, pragmatist. But I can't spell most of those words. So, put, put them on here, so. Uh, so this this is where I work. This is obviously a, a high tech corporate HQ. Uh, on the outside, it looks like this. We don't have the neck curtains anymore, actually. This is like from Google Street View. You know that bit where instead of walking outside your house and taking a photo of it, you go to Google Street View and you dump the image from Google Street View. So, uh, but actually, it looks like this inside. You know, so uh, uh, the helicopter is just down here. Yeah. And um, we have uh, piranhas are just uh, through here. And... Uh, uh, I think this is Sweden, it's a day, it's a day. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I modelled my office on that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was the other way around, I don't know. <laughs> ah, cool. <laughs> 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 you always do that presentation, like, uh, and then somebody's like, oh, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> And then you feel bad for just finding something on the internet. So, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, um, so I thought, I'm not, I'm not sure how to do these things, but I thought I'd do this as a story because everyone uh, likes uh, everyone likes the story. So, you know, it's a story. So, um, so I don't know. It might be this sort of story. I never saw that one. Uh, I don't know whether it had a happy ending, but maybe, maybe not. Or it might be this sort of story, but hopefully, hopefully not. Um, yeah. The best thing, mostly, is to start at the beginning, I suppose. Um, so, uh, yeah, so in the beginning, there's a guy called Jim. So, uh, Jim is a 50-year-old, uh, great guy, lives in London. Uh, he knows a lot about schools and apps, and uh, he's keen to invest, and so he's, uh, you know, sees an opportunity in the UK because, um, yeah, 95% uh, of schools in the UK don't have apps. In the in the in the state sector, in the private sector, I think it's you know it's uh, the majority now do which obviously we put on. So, and there's 24,000 uh, state schools in the UK. Actually, I think that's 24,000 in England only. So that would be plus like Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. And uh, and also you know also looking at nurseries and clubs and churches, sports clubs, you know things that have the same analogous community 
sort of use case, I guess. You know? So, uh, yeah. Um, this is Jim. So, um, so we we decided to make apps, and the the main thing is making apps is expensive, so schools can't afford it. So uh, we made lots of apps, lots and lots and lots, of, and that's like from like a month ago. So there's like maybe yeah half as many again as that. So, so the idea is produce at scale. Keep the price low, so the entry point um, financially is um, is viable, you know, for the state sector, which is uh, you know is probably something that's not really been addressed in the UK, uh, really, you know, so far. Uh, yeah. So uh, I thought it so it's with the team because without people, obviously, there's nothing. So. Um, so yeah, the team. So we have a project manager, it's uh, Angus. So I, I, um, I met Angus at the last uh, Joomla day in the UK. So and and he, I was doing a talk, terrified the same then as now. Uh, and then afterwards he was like, ah, oh, you know, I've got this project. And I was like, oh, so that's good. so it's a good example, a good advert for doing talks at Joomla events, <laughs> if you needed one anyway. But. So there's uh, Angus, he's like a 50-year-old guy, he's formerly like Oracle, Microsoft, experienced uh, product manager. And then um, I have Bronwyn, he's an app developer with a UI and web background. And then Paul, he's a, uh, Bronwyn's maybe 35, uh, and Paul, he's also an app developer. He's a, a more general app developer, but also with a strong focus on continuous integration and continuous delivery. And uh, that's me, the web developer there. Uh, and there's, uh, there's the boss, uh, the MD, and they just uh, hired a sales person too. But everyone, you know, by startup levels, everyone is kind of old and experienced, I guess, which is nice, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, so everyone works remotely, uh, which, is, which is most of the people are based in London or roundabouts. Obviously, I'm a bit further away. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, it works. Works fine. We have like um, weekly ticket reviews, and we use. Does anyone use Assembler? It's like a, it's a collaboration software. Does tickets, wiki, Git, Git repositories, and everything's kind of integrated. It's quite nice. We have a bit of downtime sometimes, which we still need. Uh, we have monthly meetings in person, mostly, and uh, yeah, usually we. You know, we go for like two or three week uh, code sprints. So there'll be like a, a feature set defined for a period of time, and then we'll produce that, and then uh, and then uh, release that. Uh, and everyone works closely together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of agile in the in the generic sense, and it's probably agile in the definition of agile or software development sense. But that's a, that's more complicated. <laughs> So uh, the app. Oh, if anyone's got any questions, anyway, through just just j jump in, but in the web. So um, <clears throat> yeah, we talk about apps a little bit here. Um, I don't know. You take everyone takes them for granted, but usually there's a front end which is the app. There's a bit in the middle which is uh, generally an API or, or a set of APIs, often dozens of APIs. And then we've got the, the back end. Obviously, not all apps have back ends. You know, like, for example, uh, you know, Flappy Bird probably doesn't have a back, back end, or, you know, what's uh, trivial games. But, but nearly everything has a back end. Um, yeah, so, uh, and I, I'm not really sure what other people particularly use for, for back ends, but you, you kind of need, you need, you need a database or a data container with an API stuck on the front of it. And then some sort of interface to allow people to put the data in. So, uh, so this uh, this analogy of a cow is, is, uh, is uh, in both senses of the word inappropriate because um, yeah, but technically you 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 also yeah you would also put things into the back end. So probably need a cow with two heads, otherwise it just looks wrong. But that would look even more wrong. So I'll go with that. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't know much about cows. Uh, yeah. So um, 
the app is not not dramatically uh, complicated or sophisticated. Uh, you know, we worked on the basis of a minimum viable product and then uh, evolving, you know, quickly over time. Um, yeah. Um, all new features going to all, all existing apps, so there's not a legacy, you know, legacy, legacy baggage, I guess. So, yeah, so the apps, um, they have like information screens and news and their forms and surveys. I don't know whether, I think it's like a general school thing, you end up with bits of paper saying, I agree, you know, do you sign that Bob can have his photo taken or can Sally go on the trip to the museum or, you know, this sort of thing. And yeah, I end up with loads of those. those. It's a, um, it's an interesting, uh, so that's a, you know, a positive use case for the schools in terms of saving time and effort. Have events and calendars uh, and uh, other categories of information, whether it's like you know, soccer club or, or football club, you know, or like hockey or you know, yeah, computer club. <laughs> and uh, and all the apps are like iOS and Android, tablet and phone, so cover all the major bases. And it's got to be useful. You know that bit where you do a presentation, you're like, ah, oh, there must be an XKCD about that, you know, sort of thing. So, uh, and it was, uh, so it's been this one, well, both these were kind of covered in the keynote on Friday. So, uh, yeah, being useful. You'd think being useful would be a prerequisite to any, like, uh, software development, but, uh, you know, yeah, it's not, not always the case. Um, yeah, I always find this one particularly annoying. You know, the Daily Mail website does that. Read that thing. And loads of other ones. So uh, yeah, so quickly uh, talk through how the app works, or how it looks at least, or the apps. Uh, you know, with a sort of traditional sort of home screen. Uh, it's just a common UI device, and uh, you know, some some schools have uh, six uh, tiles on the home screen, and some have nine. You know, but I think we're going to evolve this one. And uh, it's brand. Everything's branded. Oh, uh, anyone? Uh, you get a point for anyone who knows where Hill Valley School is, by the way. No. From no? what? Is that a real school or is that a school? It's a kind of a real school. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, nice one. Headmaster Strickland. Good work. <laughs> it's kind of real. Um, I so. Uh, yeah, so this is one of our, it's a demo app that we have on, on the App Store. Yeah, so we've got this news like this. So yeah, I can download this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll publish some links at the end of the... Yeah. There's two demo apps. One is... Uh, they don't... Uh, uh, well, Play Store, they don't care about anything, but iTunes, they're a bit fussy. Oh, she's a bit fussy. Uh, they don't really let you have demo apps on, on iTunes... Uh, it's in the T's and C's, but you can have like proof of concept app. If you call it a proof of concept app, then they accept it to the, uh, to the app store. But yeah, so there's two. There's one which is a uh, uh, this one is like you know like uh, an example for school, and there's another one which is an example for a nursery. So, yeah, they're both uh, both available. I'll publish a bunch of links uh, at the end as well. You know, or like tweet tweet a list of links references. Uh, yeah, so you at the gutter can new screen. So, like a blog view, you know, I guess, you know. Well, it is a blog view, actually. <laughs> well, but, um, and we've, like, uh, you know, you click on a news item, you get a detail. You've got an event screen. Uh, events is tricky because all phones have their own kind of event system in them already, whether it's Google Calendar or iCal. I don't know what the other one's called. So, the idea is rather than duplicate the calendar in your phone, you just end up with a, like an add to calendar button sort of thing. Different schools want to use it different ways. What else do we have? Uh, uh, information. So this is kind of like a static -y sort of content, as opposed to linear news, chronologically linear news category. Um, yeah. And we've got, you know, you click on the right and you get a big one, you know, sort of thing. And there's a contact screen, you know, as many uh, as many contacts as you like. And and it looks the same on iOS, and uh, these screen dumps are obviously from Android, but it looks uh, yeah, kind of exactly the same in, on um, I, iOS as it does on Android. Well, although all the apps look different because they're all branded and themed to the school, so some are like, you know, orange on white, and some are white on black, and some are blue on white, and some are 
you know, white on red. Yeah, so, uh, oh, and uh, I don't know, push notifications, I think, I don't know whether, you know, it's like one of those things, it's, you know, the things that pop up on your phone from Facebook or, or whatever, you know, so, that's a, so, you know, so the things are like, you know, if the school's closed for the day, they can send a push notification to all the uh, parents to say, school closed, it's flooded, go home. So let's, they, they, the schools see that as an important uh important thing and you can send uh, push notifications with a contextual contextual content so you can you can create a new form and you can tick the box saying send notification and it'll it'll send a notification saying please fill out you know the Florence Nightingale museum trip form and you click open and it opens a form and you fill out the form. Can you, can you do uh, groups? So, uh, yeah. So I, I would like to send it to this grade, but not that grade. I so uh, in the existing version, uh, you know, so probably started about six to eight months ago. Uh, you you can you can set up channels. They call uh, yeah. So you can you can create channels um, within the back end, and uh, then when you're sending notifications, you can choose which channel receives which channel or channels receives the notification. And in the in the app, you can subscribe. Two individual channels, so you might have like a, you know, a year one channel and a year two channel, and you might have like a football club channel or this sort of thing. Uh, you could even have a channel on a class level. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, the class level, the people register as a child. They need to subscribe to the channel. Okay. Yeah, but by default, everyone subscribed to the everyone channel. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a different. There's different like uh, UI analogies that people, uh, you know, like uh, processes people use. Some people like. You install the app and then it throws up a configuration screen and you're like, you have to choose, you know. Uh, but we we've not gone for that because, you know, uh, uh, just you know, it can put people off. You know, it's uh, it's adding layers and barriers and stuff. So, um, over time, they'll be like a, a evolve it more. So yeah, I don't know. Within the not the UK, within the English uh, state school sector. Most uh, the majority of schools use a, a really rubbish um, internal application called Sims, which is um, which was created by a local education authority, and is now oh, is it, uh, it's, uh, sold now by Capita in the in the UK. So that manages their pupil information. So uh, one of the over time will uh, evolve it so that you can import the data from the Sims system, and then. The app will know who all the kids are and then which devices belong to. We can already authenticate devices against against children at the moment, so you know, yeah. So uh, and then you'd be able to say, you know, it would be a more practical sense of send send this to everyone in year two or send this to everyone in you know uh, squirrels class or whatever. But uh, yeah, so what else we got? Um, oh yeah. It's a, Menu slides outside, normal stuff. Very standard, like UI paradigms. Um, yeah. When the uh, forms are like this sort of thing, and uh, and it all uses like it's all like uh, native, native, uh, native widgets, n native UI elements sort of thing. So uh, everything's uh, familiar toggles and stuff. You know, it's, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, like the iOS toggles, you get a little round one, and the Android ones, you get a little square one. It's much, much, you know. Yeah, forms and surveys are kind of the same thing, but the surveys like well, you know, about asking people for their opinion, whereas the form is about providing data. But you know, functionally the same. Question: How do you know the message? Ah, how do you know it's a, Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, I always think about this because uh, when I was a kid, I used to sign my own uh, forms yeah. with my dad's signature. Make it easier. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a, uh, and then you know, like a. Uh, yeah, the notification that you got a detention because you didn't do your uh, set fire to the toilets or something like that. You know. But um, yeah, yeah, no, there's no no way. <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> Me signing my dad's signature 30, 30 years ago. It's like, yeah. I assume there is a history of sends uh, report for the messages, right? Yeah, so yeah. Parents can see that the child has sent his name, the absence report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Bobby's gonna be away today. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's when the parent goes home for lunch and they find out what are you doing? It's like, and how come there's no no beer in the fridge anymore? 
But, you know, I, I think initially we're mainly targeting uh, primary schools, so it's like uh, children under 12, so it's not too bad a problem, I guess. <laughs> it's under 11, yeah. or at least the beer thing, anyway. <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, so we're talking about, I don't know, uh, has anyone got any other any queries about the app? The yeah, general principles are there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, making apps is a. It's difficult to know what to cover because it's like everyone's junior people, but you know. Uh, so we'll cover some of the app stuff anyway because it's kind of interesting from a development point of view. Yeah. So it's a weird, strange thing when you when you have meetings with uh, app developers. You sit you sit down and it's like uh, you know like four of you and you like everyone spends a, well not everyone because I'm not an app developer but. People, most everyone else spends the first five minutes taking phones out of their pockets, and you sit there and you're like, "There's nowhere to put your coffee because there's like 20 phones on the table," and, uh, and everyone you just it just looks like a meeting of like drug dealers or gangsters or something. It's just weird. I don't know. But um, so how to make apps? You know, does anyone does anyone do app development here? Oh, okay, cool. Hey, cool. Hey, so there's different ways, you know. So you can make a native app. You can write in Objective C or Java. And you can do, you'd have to you know do one per platform. You can do web apps, you know, which is you know kind of works okay. Or you can do hybrid apps, which is a which is a choice that was taken with this project. So so so, um, so basically, yeah, the idea with hybrid apps is uh, you write it once in one common high-level language, typically, and um, and a platform, a a system, compiles and converts it into a uh, like native, either native code and compiles it, or just compiles it directly into, uh, you know, uh, you know whether it's Java or, or object, Objective C or Swift, or and uh, you know, and often these ones they compile, they all do Android and iOS, but often a lot of them do Windows Phone and BlackBerry and uh, Tianzhen, Tianzhen, yeah, yeah. as well, sort of thing. So it's a good route in a sense because it means you can have a common code base and these nice things. So, uh, yeah, probably the most popular one or commonly used one is PhoneGap. Oh, it's nice. Um, it's a little bit lightweight in some respects. Uh, and AppCelerator Titan Titanium is a, is a common one. So Phone, PhoneGap and AppCelerator, they're just, you basically write mostly in JavaScript. So if you're a web developer or a front-end developer, it's, uh, you know, it's familiar. There's, I, I can never remember which one. It's like Censure Touch, I think you write in uh, there. Yeah, one, one of them you write in .NET, which is really bizarre. Maybe that's... Yeah, uh, uh, Xamarin, uh, yeah. And Corona. Uh, so this is... But we, uh, we chose App Accelerated today. Uh, yeah, it's probably, you know, for the sort of corporate... You know, a uh, large corporate market. It's probably the it's probably the, like the prevalent um, platform, I guess. People like McDonald's or you know Thomas, you know Thomas Cook, first choice. They use it. Uh, Starbucks, uh, yeah, Starbucks, yeah. So, uh, but Phone Gap is probably the best one if you're like, you know, just start. You know, it's your initial forays and you're as a as an individual doing app development, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you need to build it on on a Mac, I sort of thing. But yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a really nice tool set, you know. Uh, um, yeah. It's quite complicated set. Up. Yeah, this is a. You should really know most of them. Well, Phone Gap and Accelerator and uh, Corona are all, are all open source. Um, but you know, it's not like. You know, it's a bugbear of mine. It's not like proper open source. It's like it's more like open source with a corporate, you know, a corporate monster or benefactor or you know. So, uh, uh, so for example, Accelerator. Yeah, so it, I mean they're, they're quite pro open source and uh, you know, uh, and whenever everything's open source, but they have a platform and you can buy the platform. And it's like uh, you buy the platform, then it provides you with APIs that you can use. Say, for example, send push messaging and this sort of thing. And they have like a cloud building sort of service too. They just changed their pricing structure actually. It's, uh, it, it went from, they used to have a really good uh, tranche of licensing for uh, you know, like independent developers, but they just they just uh, took that away, so it's now much more expensive at least. 
um, I think they'll be okay. You know? you know, you look at these companies and you think, oh, shit, is it going to be there in five years' time? And you're like, uh, I, I think, you know, I think you can imagine there's probably some consolidation that's going to happen here. It's natural evolution, but maybe two, you know, in a couple of years' time, there'll be like two or three of these will be the dominant, you know, dominant platforms, I guess. Yeah, so uh, so about with App Accelerator, you, uh, you write your logic in JavaScript. It's nice. It's normal. You do the layout in Alloy, uh, which is a, their own uh, App Accelerator's own language, uh, but it's really just like HTML or XML, sort of structural-wise. And then you do a, you do all the styling in TSS, which is basically a derivative of CSS. So when you look at it, you're like, you're like, oh, it's an app. And you look at it, you're like, oh, it's just a bunch of code. It's like not too scary. And um, yeah, no, and there's lots of open source modules that you can use. And, you know, different modules you can include in your projects, and they compile into native code in different ways and stuff. There's a lot of variation in, in the quality of, of, you know, code and, and sort of modules out there. Sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's got lots of good APIs, and uh, the community is pretty good. It's not like, you know, you know, it's that bit where, you know, you, you can tell how widely used, how widely adopted or mature a platform is by, if you Google, if you Google a question, you find more answers than questions. With Accelerate, you still find more questions than, than answers, you know, in their equivalent of Stack Overflow. But at least people are asking. So. Uh, yeah, so it's open source with like a corporate overlord. And the corporate overlord provides the cloud ser uh, service infrastructure in the, in the, in the cloud. So. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, apps, yeah. So uh, we, um, one of the things with this is, you know, the idea is to hit, uh, you know, in, in, in an internal cost per app of being exceptionally low, and, and without that, there's not, it's not a viable, it's not a viable, it's just not viable, really. <laughs> so you can't sell the app for a few hundred quid if it costs you like, you know, yeah, yeah, two weeks to, it took you two weeks to make it. So, uh, so everything's done. Uh, it's interesting because. Uh, it's kind of a different sort of uh, like all the um, looking at the automated testing talks earlier, earlier in the last couple of days, and everything's done in PHP as the scripting language. But here we're using JavaScript as the as the scripting language. Um, I don't know, scripting languages is like doesn't really matter in a sense, you know. It's you know like it'd be like. 20 years ago, writing things in Perl, and then you go for writing them in Bash, and then start writing them in TCL because it's cross-platform and then you start writing them in PHP because that's like the language used for everything and then then everyone else starts writing them in JavaScript so you have to write them in JavaScript. But it all does the same thing. Anyway. But, um, so it uses uh, Node.js basically to, to run uh, run scripts and uh, uh, Grunt.js is like a task runner, like um, kind of like Robo for PHP and um, Calabash is like an integrated test uh, what made test environment? So it's it's nice in a way. So it's kind of like a you sort of point it to your your Android and your iOS em emulators, and it goes and you know like a Selenium would do in a in a browser. It would, goes and clicks these things in uh, you know for example on Android, it would be in the Jenny Motion uh, emulator, and it would test everything. So you commit a bit of code, and it still works. And you commit a bit. So it's all it's hard. You know, you find out soon if you break something. And then uh, this runs under this uh, uh, Go continuous delivery server. So, so basically, it's like Go, the Go server is just kind of a web interface where you just get a bunch of like green lights when this thing, you know. Uh, so the Go server initiates all the tasks and then collects returns from the tasks, and you can see the progress of your, your continuous uh, delivery, continuous integration. And uh, yeah, there's also there's a uh, Dutch guy. Uh, he lives in Lancaster. Um, he's developed these tools called KrausFX. It's like uh, automation tools for app stores. You know, like uh, taking photo. You know, you have to take screen. You have to if you, when you submit your app, you have to you know, submit it with screen dumps of every uh, in different fact, form factors. That automates that. Or automates that and delivery to app stores too. Um, we also use a um, Phantom JS as a you know. For automating things that don't have uh, APIs or interfaces. So this looks like this: you got a Go server, and there's a Grunt.js runs the type server, and then, you know it kicks off a Go server agent, 
you know, pulls the code out of Git and then it, uh, you know, sets a bunch of options, pulls in the theme for that particular school, uh, compiles it in Java, you know, uh, Xcode, runs the Calabash testing, and um, sets up the certificates. There's a lot of messing around with certificates with apps, and then and then delivers it to either iTunes or or Google Play Store. So, uh, it's quite quick, mostly. Um, Angus, the boss, has got a Mac, you know, one of those Mac Pros that looks like a bin um, with like 32 gig of RAM in it. So it, it runs okay. But uh, to do like 40 apps, it takes all day, I guess. Uh, yeah. Has anyone got any, any questions about the build process? It's, it's kind of epically complicated, but... It's kind of a high level, high level. Uh, when you buy times x apps, you mean for every school you build the app for? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Times two platforms. Okay. You know, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it runs a lot. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's the problem. The problem is, what you'd really want to do is you, you'd want to run it like in a data center, you know, like on a. But because you've got to run it on a Mac to compile the Xcode, it's really a, and that you can't get Mac. Mac that uh, Apple don't make servers anymore. Well, I said it's like a Mac Mini server, maybe, but. But is, is the app of school so different that you couldn't handle it with just one app? And in the back end, you would store some, mm -hmm. like, well, this school's got this view, yeah, all yeah. the apps, and it's broken down. This app. Yeah, 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 this is a different approach. And there's another um, company, what are they called? Uh, Scoop in the UK, which take this approach, where basically, when you. When you when you launch the app the first time it asks you what your school is and, and it downloads a JSON that's got your theme in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, you know there was like a it seemed like there was a feeling in the marketplace that's an equally valid approach totally. Uh, but there was a feeling in the marketplace that people wanted their own app, you know, rather than you know. Uh, and, that name in the app store. Yeah, exactly. I don't. Yeah, I don't know why all the apps are free. Actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. So it's more, I don't know whether that's more of a branding decision on the part of the schools. But you know, schools, I don't know, in the, U, in the UK, probably everywhere, I guess, right, you know, worried about things like uh, privacy and security and, you know, uh, need these things that people worry about when there's children involved, which is totally, you know. So I think these things, is like this nuanced uh, requirement that they have, which they sort of translate to you in, in different ways, like, you know, whether it's like, you know, the back end's only accessible via, you know, like SSL, uh, HTTPS, whatever. Um, you know, so it's like, and that just makes them feel better about it. You know, even though they're sitting, using it in the school, you know, like on the computer in the school office. These things, you know, it's like, do you, things to make people feel better about things. <laughs> it's like humans, I guess. Um, yeah. This is the back end, which is probably the more, more interesting bit, bit for us. Um, it's, it's more more attractive than this one. Um, so what does the back end do? Um, in practice, it just allows the users, uh, the schools, to uh, to enter content, you know, and uh, enter events, and basically put all all the stuff that comes out on the phone. They, they just put it in there. So whether it's like a uh, you know, ICS feeds for calendars, because all the schools seem to have their own calendar systems anyway, whether it's Google Calendar or some sort of iCal or some crazy Microsoft Exchange calendar. So they, uh, you know, they just put in their feed URLs. Although the app, uh, the back end does its own event system too. We kept it quite light, because so, yeah, they don't, they don't really, J events would be too heavy, heavy for them really. So, um, and they set up the forms and surveys and send out push messages. And then, you know, like all the normal things like access control. Oh, and yeah, survey data and form data they have too. So, yeah, so, so we chose Joomla, of course. Uh, yeah, that was okay. Why, of course? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, did, I had a practice of this presentation, you know, because uh, I was reading uh, Brian's thing. It said, like, practice your presentation in front of other people. So I did. Uh, I did it at the local tech meet up in Aberdeen, and it's like a meeting of this. half of it's like students, but it's like a, so. It, but in in that in that one, I, I didn't have the of course at the bottom. So. I don't know. Yeah, I of course, of course, because I like Gmail and it works really well. It's awesome. 
<laughs> yeah, you could use other things. Yeah, I was reading a thing about the other day about somebody, uh, an app that used the uh, Google Docs spreadsheets as the back end. So you just put everything in Google. They have like a Google Docs form. And it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's all very Googly. So why Joomla? Yeah, so it's uh, stable, secure, it's mobile friendly, you know. It's just, so you can imagine uh, if a teacher's on a school trip, they can, they can log into the back end on their phone and they can uh, publish a push message to say the bus is going to be late. You know, and get that. Well, everyone has got the app in. <laughs> and uh, it's great to develop on, uh, obviously. And, you know, uh, NPC, all these lovely things. And um, and to be honest, this is a main. This is a main thing. You know, it's like, why? You know, why would you write something when you have, you know, like all the all the bricks and mortar, like user ma user access content. It's like it's it's almost. It's almost made made for this purpose. Oh, it's not, not obvious. It works really well. You know. Yeah. It was interesting with Chris's uh, talk the other day about um, API in uh, Joomla 3.6. Was uh, so that'll be that'll be an interesting progression. Every app has its own Joomla uh, backend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not the same server that collects, but uh, each each app uh, has its own. School, school. Each, each school sort of, yeah, yeah, app and school is so kind of yeah. interchangeable. Yeah, yeah, it's, all, yeah, it's a it's a Joomla instance um, for each one. Yeah. So they're all like, you know, but they're all pretty much identical. So yeah, it's an interesting. I, I really wanted to see the the site ground uh, uh, talk, um, but it was one of those ones it was two on at the same time. You know, to see how with the Joomla.com how they. I'll have to watch the video after. It's a modified version. I'm there. It's a modified version, and uh, you can you can actually build something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking whether or not you could uh, you could have it, you know, just like one code set with symbolic links to all the folders within, and then and each each one. The only thing that's different is the images folder and the config.php and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is actually easier to scale. I mean, you can think about it. It's easier to scale because yeah. one big application, one database, and it's stuck at the one server. Yeah, one yeah. Cloud, no cloud is stuck on the one server because of the database. This, you can put it in 20 servers. Ah, you can, yeah. And some people, with some of the schools, they say they want to host it internally. You know, right, exactly. Which is ridiculous because why would you take it off <laughs> and put it in your office? Like, latency would be yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's more, and it's, it's more robust, you know. You, can, you can't, well, you could break all the schools at once, but that would be difficult. <laughs> be an achievement, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so what we do is we we use the Joomla front end. So uh, they log into the Joomla front end. They don't touch the Joomla back end at all. So we can uh, you can just show them the interface that's you know, you know relevant to them uh, to the users themselves. So uh, yeah, yeah. Each yeah, so each app has its own Joomla back end. And uh, there's a we did a custom template that's quite flexible. So so basically, when they log into the back end, it looks the same as the app. It's all branded, colors the same. So, so there's a nice continuity. It looks it looks uh, sorry. it looks posh, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, uh, oh yeah. So we use uh, this is full of the bottom. <laughs> I so uh, we just use two extensions really um, well, and a, you know, three if you can to keep a backup. But you just use it everywhere. So, it's um, so we use uh, fields attached for structured data, and um, and uh, uh, an extension called you can't see it. Just got off the bottom. Sorry about that. Called uh, uh, J Backend, which provides a RESTful a RESTful API interface for Joomla. So, but I'll expand on that. Uh, yeah, so the, generally the approach this is like the approach used for everything. Mostly, I suppose, is to use as much core functionality as possible. Use the bare minimum number of extensions, and uh, you know, make everything adaptable and responsive. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the idea was a lot of the choices in development are really focused on continuing like, continuous integration and continuous delivery. So that's really uh, influenced a lot of choices in terms of keeping the complexity low and uh, yeah, dependencies, keeping the number of dependencies down as well. Sort of thing. But also the idea you could run it just uh, 
it's kind of standard Zoom. You can run it on a like commodity hosting. We ran we we ran it on commodity hosting for the first first six months, you know, and uh, that was fine. In the back end. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the good things about using like an, uh, you know, like a like a service-based system like Appcelerator is that so they provide, you know, they provide all that. They've got a there's like a push API. So so if you didn't use one of those, you'd have to you'd have to push things separately to iOS and Android devices. So so they they manage the authentication okay, between. Them. Oh okay yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just No, no, it's just like normal Joomla login for yeah, admin. So yeah, 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 yeah. I think we did think about. I mean, it's all. It all defaults to uh, HTTPS, you know. So uh, we did think about using like a two-factor authentication, but um, that's the difficult one because the uh, the user base in terms of people using it in the school, they uh, they're not exceptionally IT literate, um, and uh, you know, uh, conservative in terms of adopting new systems. You know, talking it's maybe like typically administrators working in the office. They've worked in the same school office using spreadsheets for the last 20 years or whatever. But, you know, that sort of thing. So, so uh, there's a balance between simplicity, sim you know, user interface simplicity and security. It's hard to... Yeah, I, I think that means, uh, so I know that there is a couple of problems first example, you change password and then you have to update the, the app yeah. because it's not more yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. But the, uh, there's no password in the app at all. Um, although the app does authenticate itself against a Joomla user when the app connects to the back end. That's probably a man. <laughs> I'll maybe cover some of that later if we've got time. So the back end looks like this. Uh, they've got like a home screen dashboard which has like a, you know, it publishes results from their surveys, you know, that come back and they you know, you can get analytics from apps, you know, so this is like the number of people who've used it per, per day, I guess, you know. And then you can see like different categories, you know, whether it's like the news and information and events and messages and some push system and uh, yeah, forms and, uh, yeah. So you can see this uh, continuity of bra uh, branding between this and the app. It's the custom bag on the front end of the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they, they they never see the slash administrator. No, you know, so it's like it's the the back end of the app is the front end of Joomla. Or something. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. So when you have, you have a you have a call, you're like you're on a conference call, and then the boss is like you know the boss says, oh, we need to fix the back end. And it's like, does he mean that back end or that back end or that back end? <laughs> yeah. So there's like. You publish news items like this. It's all familiar. This is just a content category list. We have to implement this uh, reordering. At the moment, you only get that in the uh, Joomla backend, so we have to put that in front. And that just hits a uh, Ajax uh, plugin to set the orders. Uh, you, you know, you can create a new news item. So yeah, this is what I'm saying. So basically, if you create any item of content, you can choose that it's a notification. And you can choose when your notification is sent, so you can have it so sent at nine o'clock the next day. You can choose the notification group that receives that content, uh, that notification. Yeah. So, so it's nice. It's like a kind of like a holistic. Any content can be a notification sort of approach. Uh, yeah, we have like a you know, you can see when people reply to forms. This is a, it displays the results in a table and a graph. If it's a yeah. So if it's a if the form that uh, the box on the form uses like a 
a multiple is a multiple choice thing in the shows are correct. So about the forms, uh, are they able to create the custom forms or you create custom forms for them and they use it? Yeah, no. In the school, don't need to come get it from the school to create the custom forms. No, no, they, they, they create the forms they themselves. Forms. Yeah, it's, we, we've got like, um, I don't know, I don't have a screen for this, but, um, but uh, no, I don't. The forms are always challenging for them. Yeah. yeah, but we kept the, you know, we kept the, um, you know, the number of choices down. So okay. they only have like, they only have like 12, maximum of 12. Uh, questions and and then they can either have like a text box or a big text box, you know, which is or a selection or a toggle, yes, no, you know. So uh, so it, it's it's hard to make it simple, but I think we I think we've nailed it, you know. And you and you know if you add a field, then it adds a box, and then you add a field, it adds a box. So basically, you don't see, you know, try and hide the complexity. Oh yeah, for the um, yeah for all these form for these. Uh, um, data which augments the Joomla content structure, we use fields attach. So, uh, say for example, um, this decision is. Uh, so, all articles would have. Has anyone used fields attach before? Okay. It's like a. It's a very light CCK. It's not a CCK. It's a CCK? It's a CCK. <laughs> Basically, it allows you to add. You can, you know, you can add one or you can add, you create groups of fields and then you apply groups of fields to categories, one or more categories. So, you know, say for example, you can have a, yeah, yeah, but it's just within Joomla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you just end up, when you're editing content, you just have another tab, which, you know, yeah, it's nice. It's really, uh, uh, the code's in, yeah, it's nice, yeah, really nice. So how, how does, how does it work when you actually get a, a submission to the bot? Because I mean, one way you can you can share to the user, and then you have to keep the submission to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the phone the phone caches it in a local MySQL database, and then when it's online, if it's not online, uh, it it sends the data back to the API. It's a backend API, so, so, and then that stores stores it in a you know a form submission table. Or something. Okay. Yeah. So it's like yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so all these these fields here are all, uh, fields in fields attached. So whether or not there's a notification, the date of notification. So different categories have different attached fields. You know, say for example, an event, the, an article in the event category has like a start date time and an end date time field, and you know this sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, notification log. So this tells you how many people. You know, if you send a message, it says. Oh, 52 people received this message, 20, 28%, 28 of them were Android, 24 of them were You get that from the message in API. And you can see, uh, you can see, you know, uh, this is not such a great example because the, these ones are all sent to all, all users, but you know, it would show that, you know, uh, if you'd send it to just class one, it would just say class one. Over time, we should be able to get to a point where, uh, if the back end has a list of pupils, then um, you'd be able to see, you know, if a parent or guardian of this pupil received this notification. So within the school, they they would be able to look at the back end and say, well, these people haven't replied to the form. We need to give them a bit of paper. But you know, a smartphone penetration, like the parental demographic, is you know, eighteen eighteen to forty anyway, sort of thing, just about. So. Or 18 to 40, 18 to 50. So the smartphone demographic uh, penetration in that demographic is quite high. So. I'm just looking at a couple of the wee details of the features of the app. So, so the push notifications, yeah. So we mentioned this a bit already. So basically, any item can be a push notification, and uh, and they get sent via the App Accelerator API cloud. Um, which is nice. It's just a JSON. You just send them a bit of JSON. JSON will authenticate your your credentials and then send them the JSON. So it just runs as a cron job every every two minutes, going through all the back ends and sending out all the messages in the queues. So you never really have to wait. It's all custom code. It just sits. There's a folder in the Joomla install called cron tasks. So, so, so the cron job actually submits the message to the accelerator. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then it records that it's been sent. Uh -huh. It's quite quick. It's, you know, they both sit in the same data. Well, they're both in London. So, you know. Yeah. And it works on an Apple. This is Angus. Angus is an iWatch. It works on an iWatch. Not very exciting. Oh, I should have an, I should have a, an Android Wear watch as well. For, 
Can we call it your boat? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's not very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I always talk too fast, so I was thinking like, uh, of course. Do. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so fields attached. I'll just rattle on a bit. So, I think so. Uh, so fields attached. You know this thing where they, how you have a website and they have a picture of the product on the page, and you don't get it in a box. You just download it. Uh, it's nice. Uh, it's all UI driven. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, Christian is uh, in Barcelona. He's uh, the developer for it. It's written in Spanish, which is good because it means you have to learn a bit of Spanish. <laughs> read the, uh, the variable names, and you sit there. What's that? You know, like <laughs> that's cool. You know, too much code's written in English anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's fine. I use I've used been using fields attached for maybe four, three or four years for everything, for like tractor stock control databases to like you know uh, everything really. I kind of stopped using K2, you know, switched to using fields attached just because it's lighter. Easier. Uh, oh yeah, so so we use this also use this extension. The two extensions we use is fields attached and J backend. So J backend it provides a an API interface for Joomla. It's nice. It's written for developers really. Uh, it's a good starting point though if you uh, if you wanted to hook a hook an app onto your Joomla install. Um, you know so uh, yeah so it manages all these like mundane things like API keys between the app. And the back end, uh, that sort of, and um, and they give you they give you a few different boilerplate, basically bits of boilerplate code that you can you know you can build on. It's one for article article data and one for menus and one for users. So we never used the user one. Either. It's nice. It does I think it does XML, but we you know most people use JSON. Maybe consider uh, uh, looking at other solutions, uh, like Slip, for example. No, no. I, uh, this this choice was actually made just before I joined the project, but yeah. I've I've I'm, I've been completely happy with it the whole time. So it's not, you no, know, it's, well, it's really well. But you know, you know, in a sense, you could just write your own, um, uh, you know, like Ajax plugin for Joomla or anyway, and do the same thing. It wouldn't be a big, you know, if if we didn't do that, that's probably what we would have done. The only thing is, you'd have to you'd have to do the API keys. So, you know, it's nice having a GUI in the back end, but copying and pasting yeah. your API keys. You know, so, you know, so uh, yeah, so I want to touch on some of this like CI and CD DevOps stuff. So it's because it's really a, it's really a key to the project in a way. Um, so um, so all the apps have the same code base. They're all built at the same Git repository, and it brings in a different uh, yeah. So it's really really important for the uh, no, the, basically for the, for the project working, I guess you know. So uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's different. So basically, it pulls the code from GitHub and builds the builds it with a theme, and then uh, it runs this. We sort of touched on that in the in the diagram earlier. So. And uh, yeah, we use this uh, Phantom JS for just, uh, pretending to be pretending to be a person. Like a lot of the app stores, well, particularly Apple, the iTunes, it's not really set up. It's deliberately set up so you can't automate it because they they don't want people to. Well, like you know, spam submissions and stuff. So, so you you got to do a good bit of work there. But once it's set up, it works. Uh, yeah. So we initially we had it uh, running on Rock and Shared Hosting, and now we we moved to a Rock and Managed Cloud. I'm not such a big fan of that, to be honest. I'd rather it was like a real uh, virtual machine. But oh, and uh, we we use a uh, Unity, or Unity uh, which is a completely awesome. In terms of, you said every that that bit where you sit and you watch Kickstart running through so many times, but you could just if you run Unity, it takes like a second, and you're like, oh, it's like, at first you're like, oh, that must have not worked because it was too quick, and then you're like, oh, you know, and you've got your tuner installed. So basically, you just uh, pass a pass an XML file and it creates a backend from an Akiba, like a seed a JPA file. Uh, yeah, lessons. This is important. So uh, yeah, what did we learn from? Uh, uh, automation is so essential. Uh, iTunes submissions, pain in the ass. Um, Android fragmentation doesn't really matter. And uh, app stores don't want you to automate stuff. I just breeze through these bits. But ask any questions. This time. Uh, yeah, from the back end, I think uh, yeah, it's good to develop, you know, with simplicity and with a future in mind. So we're iterating quickly. So. Uh, and we try not to accumulate technical debt. So it's like if you have like a two-week code sprint every month, 
then uh, you, you know you end up doing things quickly, and the technical debt will just kill you over time. So, um, yeah, APIs is great. It's nice writing APIs too, to be honest. And uh, yeah, so we and we script everything in JavaScript, just because all the app developers speak JavaScript and everything runs JavaScript. Uh, oh, hey, some commercial lessons. You know, this is not my field so much, but uh, yeah, schools are slow making decisions. Not as bad as hospitals, but nearly as good. And um, yeah, there's lots of scope for growth, and it's, it's basically a really good idea. Uh, you know, from a commercial point of view. And it's, this is a really thing that's interesting to me. It's like so, like different schools have different, uh, you know, uh, gain value from it in different ways. So, like if it's like a, some schools, if it's in, it's in like wealthy area, they're like, oh, you know, they they look fancy because they've got an app, you know. And other schools, they're like, they have like low attendance because they're in like a less prosperous area, and they they're using it to like drive pupil engagement, and these they have like specific targets to meet for pupil engagement. So, it's different value propositions for different different markets. Oh, yeah, so any question, if you would like to come and try out the app or the back end, uh, come, come and catch us. We've got like 20 apps on the phone, or, or, and uh, you know, you can play with this, like a demo back end, I can let you have a look at it. Uh, uh, thanks.